So now from our form, our data grid, we haven't looked at too much, but if we pull up our properties dialog and flip over to our events, there's actually a series of events that we can tie into within our data grid. Or we can just kind of keep working with what we have and we'll utilize what's called select item, which is probably the more intuitive way based on what we've covered. I don't like edit, so I'm just going to change this to customer. I'm going to change that to add, edit, and delete, because that just makes more sense to me. All right. So we'll start with delete. So data grid view one dot selected rows and what we're going to pull from here oh that's interesting so what we want to get from here is find row to delete capture user object delete row refresh that's our objective so we technically could have multiple items here so we'll do a for each I'm not sure what it's going to give us Get a numerator. Uh, so let's explore this current object, of course. Data grid view selected rows collection. Get last row in, get next row. Okay. For each data grid view row, row in rows, row dot cells why is it being so difficult for each data grid view cell cell in cells It's been a while since I've used this, so I'm trying to remember where the What I'm trying to do is get the columns. Because the binding may not happen in the same order every time. That's the concern I have. 
<clears throat> Did you call a certain table for it? No. So what I have now is I basically end up with a data grid view full of rows, and each row has cells, yeah. and those cells and columns are all kind of like mapped together. Yeah. The problem is that this control is not giving me that is not giving me good access to each element. It's just like here's a collection of cells, here's a collection of rows. So I'm having to loop through them to find them instead of giving me any sort of search. Which is the part that I find irritating. This needs to be selected rows, first of all. And if the column index, I'll just go with it for now, is zero. Cell dot value. This is the ID field. Int ID of user. So I have to be cast to an int. And then from here, what we'll have to do is SQL user utility util uh, SQL common string name. So we're going to have to do util dot get all users, and then I'm going to do this. Don't. This is called a lambda expression. We're going to cover this later, but basically what it allows me to do is write SQL-like statements in my C sharp, and for speed of time, I'm going to do this. Typically, you would write like a for each loop. <laughs> and loop through these. If you want to mimic this in yours, I'm okay with that. Um, so this will give us the user to delete. This will be a user object. And then we'll say util.delete user, user to delete. We're basically doing all of this in here. And then load users. There we go. So what happens here, just so you can get a sense of what all of this is actually doing. So here's my first record of me. I select it, I then hit the delete button. What I'm getting back is this collection of rows. But that collection doesn't really mean anything, it's just giving me these data grid view rows. Each row has a series of cells. There's nothing identifiable like a primary key on any one of these rows. So the only way that you know which row you have is really to look at the cells in that row. So by looking at the cells, each cell has a formatted value type and a value type 
the value type is the actual value. In this case, it's the primary key for that column or for that um, user. It's the ID field in this case. And I'm looking at it based on this column index because I know if I can get back to my grid, I can't. Well, I kind of can. This first column is zero. That's my ID field. So I'm saying, oh, if the column index is zero, then just keep cruising, grab the cell value of one, which is the ID field value. And then I just go back to my SQL user utility and say, go grab all the users and then grab me that user that I want. And then delete that user. Looking at this, I'm pretty sure the only way that I would know the column name is I would actually have to go back to my data grid view. There's a columns property. Each one of these columns. Oh, This columns property is a collection of columns, and each one of these has an index and a name. You probably can't see that from the back, but it says data grid view, text box, column, name, ID, index zero. So I actually would have had to loop through all the columns first, find the index of the column I'm interested in, which is ID. Once I found that, then I'd have to loop through all the selected rows loop through the cells of those selected rows looking for the I, the index of the column I wanted. To make all that work. Is that what you're going to use the for each loop for? Yeah. So what it would end up actually looking like would be find column. So I do for each data grid view column in data grid view one dot columns I'd have to add a variable which would be int um, ID column index so then what I would do here is I would say so for each column in the data grid view if column dot name equals ID ID column index equals call dot index break. So if the column name is ID, grab the index of that and then break, get out of the loop. I now have it. Then I'd go through here and loop. And then I'd have to check each one of these cells still, but I would be checking based on ID column index because that column could have moved into the third position or fifth position because right now we're not controlling the order at which those columns appear. So it's just kind of haphazard in theory. So that column index is here. So that once it matches, then we assume we've got the right column and it works. So if we run this, we're going to get the same result. And then I'll delete that. I'll select and then delete. That being said, that took a lot longer than I expected.